So, what do we have on the bench today? Well, this is the uh, latest incarnation of the case sorter that we saw earlier, except it's, as you can see, quite a little bit different on this one. Let's take a little closer look. Um, the purpose of this machine is to sort brass cartridge cases into different bins, and one way to do that is to uh, measure them, and since this is a, the, the length of them, and since this is a 9mm case uh, cartridge, this is going to be about 19 millimeters in length. And sure enough, it is. Now, how can we automate that process of measuring the, uh, the cases? Well, one way is to use a what's called a DRO. And this is the one I chose. Turns out I chose a little poorly. It's a little too cheap. Um, but what this does is it allows the uh, user to uh, mount this set of rails on the machine and then connect the black case to the small whatever is going to be moving around. In this case, uh, a small arm which will measure the length. That then is connected out to a display unit and conveniently enough, they used a micro USB connector. So, with that, all I had to do was disconnect their head unit and plug it in to my own circuit. And that allowed me to read the data after a lot of fiddling and programming and figuring it out. So let's take a look, and if I can get a good enough angle and not block the light, Let's see how this works. So here we have the uh, rail that it was sliding on in there, mounted on in their picture, and here's the little black box in the back. On this I've placed a small um, arm, and we'll see why that's needed later. But a case would sit on top, would end up landing on top of this, and then this motorized carriage, which is connected via uh, notched belts, uh, to motor uh, would raise the cartridge to a stop plate and then the the uh, DRO unit will stop moving. The carriage continues on up. It's connected to the DRO with a spring. When the, DR when the carriage reaches its limit switch right here, the system then knows that it's done with travel and the spring has provided a light pressure to keep the case uh, lined up nicely against the stop plate. We can now take a reading and know how tall our case is. That lets us know exactly what to do with it. Well, what are we going to do with it? Well, this arm will take the case and drop it at the appropriate position. Let's take a little closer look at that uh, little gripper unit right there. So you can see the gripper, uh, which rides on another carriage, uh, motorized carriage on another rail. The gripper has a, it's hard to get this to focus just right, uh, hole through it. And the case will ride in there, and that little pin would uh, that you saw with the yellow tape on it would raise a cartridge up against the gate to be measured. Then it lowers it back down. This solenoid then closes gripping the case so that it can be carried to the appropriate spot and released. Now there was a little bit involved in uh, getting this all to work naturally. Let's see if we can keep all the cables out of the way here. So to get that all to work we had to connect the DRO to a, our own micro a USB connector, and then that naturally had to uh, feed into a Raspberry Pi and via a small breakout breakout board. Then uh, there's a, a small Arduino involved. Uh, that'll be gone soon. That is uh, managing the case feeder. It uh, modulates an infrared LED that is in uh, one side of this little uh, unit that I printed up and it shines an infrared LED through one side and then a sensor on the other and that fits over the case feed tube 
and allows the system to know when a case has dropped through. So then the Arduino can kick in and turn on the motor for the case feeder until the uh, case arrives and then it will uh, turn off the case feeder and it will then tell the Raspberry Pi that there is a, a case available. Uh, what else do we have? We also have a small uh, MOSFET which uh, is used to and it which is used to drive the uh, solenoid right here. Uh, this is going to power the solenoid to grip the case and then it's got a uh, back EMF uh, diode there to, pr to uh, cut that uh, back spike out of it. There's also a, s a small servo and we'll take a look at that but that is driven by a small board here because the Raspberry Pi is known for not having the greatest uh, the most stable uh, PWM outputs. So the way this is uh, working we have a case feeder here that's going to rotate drop a case down the tube and then that's going to uh, land down here on this plate. The plate will then spin out of the way, which allows the case to drop into the gripper. The case then closes, the unit raises, gets a measurement, the gripper grabs it, carries it off to the appropriate drop point. Here we can see the system in action. It's initializing the servo uh, to know where the plate should stop. And here it goes. And there's it. Um, I'm going to give a lot more detail on this. I'm getting inconsistent results from the DRO. So I've got a replacement on the way, but I may be able to uh, do this without even using that uh, DRO caliper unit at all. So I'm going to work on that next. Um, anyway, it was a fun little project. Not done yet.